Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. Sorry for the short hiatus, I had to move houses, and then I got sick for over a week uh, right after I did, so... But I'm back now, and I don't really have anything special to say here. We're going to be fighting uh, another one of the four Cardinals of Virtue. Um, uh, it's going to start off with a pretty decent cutscene, and uh, other than that, I don't really have anything special to say. So, right here, we're going to get started. I'm here. There's no need to worry about a thing. Get them, mommy! Get them! Mommy? Can't you see? Mommy's fighting the bad monsters for us. Mister, if you don't open your eyes, you'll miss everything. So right here is a little weird coincidence. We're going to have this short fight with some affinities and an Ardor here in the forest. You're not going to get a uh, ranked on this fight. Like, uh, you don't get in a, you know, like a medal ranking once you finish this. And because it doesn't really matter in the long run, all I say is don't really get hit and do it in a pretty quick fashion. Uh, by this point, you might be more used to these, so it's nothing really to worry about, but... Yeah, you're not going to get a ranking for this, so just as long as you don't get damaged, um, you'll probably end up getting a good ranking for the entire match. It's mostly your fight against the boss that matters, so... I guess uh, take this one uh, a little bit easier if you want. It doesn't really matter too much. How do you spell denied again? For the record, uh, cereza is Spanish for cherry, and when you put ita at the end as a suffix, that div div means a diminutive. So it means little cherry. That's what he's saying. Tisha! Well, Hitty, what do you think we should do? He's hurt you, has he? Well, we can't be having that now, can we?
So this is a big tentacle guy we've seen in the past uh, few chapters. Eustacea. Which is Latin for justice. Let's rock, baby! Alright, so you're gonna actually see me, like, say it all, like, uh, fail a few times because it was a good showcase for all of his abilities. See, so, yeah, he will, obviously, as you can, uh, see before. Like, he will try, you know, smack you with those big, you know, uh, spike tendrils down there. And he will try to spray, um, that sort of poison gas in front of you. If you keep to the absolute front of the thing and smack the, uh, tendril with the face on it, like I'm doing, you will actually avoid the poison spray attack, so it's actually not too difficult. You can always tell by the shadow somewhat when the, uh, tendrils have come down and smack you. But sometimes, um, as I showed there, it can be very... Uh, tricky to find to try and like figure out exactly where the tent the spike tendril is gonna fall That little pod that he sp that um, the head spit out you're gonna want to destroy those as soon as you can They are weak. They only take one hit to kill but it's um, Something you want to kill because they uh, bring out vines and plants as you saw there um, that head attack where you know the head tendril goes out and attacks you That's the only attack that Eustacea has that you can get witch time from so you have to be careful to, you know, dodge from it. So, yeah, that's what the pod does. It spits out those vine things. So, yeah, if he, he will often do that attack right after one of the tendrils spits, like, the sticky goo against you. So, if you don't break out quick enough, you will get hit by the spiked seed pod tentacles. So, these are all the moves you have to look out for. See right there? That's the only attack you could do to get witch time on him. For this, for this fight, I'm mainly using the Scarborough Fair weapons. Um, I'm not using Shiraba because, uh, similar to uh, the previous um, boss fights, um, Shiraba's uh, Wicked Weave attacks, which is what you always use during boss fights since she enters like a climax mode, uh, they're just too strong and they kill him too quickly. Now, this part is weird right here. I couldn't believe that happened. Like, that little quick time event right there with the plant, that's what happens if Bayonetta falls off. The platform she's currently standing on. Oh yeah, there's attack where she drops like a bunch of rocks on there. Does a sweeping motion. So yeah, like that cutscene that I triggered. It's supposed to be the part where you know you actually do this. I was worried for a second that the game had glitched because after that cutscene, you're supposed to be doing what I'm doing now. But instead, I triggered that like small cutscene where I fell down and I had to save myself. That's weird. But yeah, as you run along the uh, shaft, let's say. Yeah, you have to dodge the uh, tendrils, and you have to dodge these weird spikes uh, circling around it. Once you reach there, you'll find this cutscene where she kicks the heart of it out of the mouth, and you just have to beat up on this part. The tendrils have very obvious attacks here, so it's not really uh, too dangerous. And once you do that, Bayonetta does this pretty awesome-looking uh, unarmed, like, slicing move, which just gets rid of it. And you'll get a uh, checkpoint after this, so... So, uh, yeah, you can, like the other fights, um, have points during it where you can, you know... Uh, see, yeah, I think you may not be able to tell, but there's a saving meter there. What the game expects you to do after you destroy one of them is for you to keep jumping from platform to platform to help maintain your combo by shooting it. But that's a waste of time and unnecessary. Just jump off of it and trigger that, uh, uh quick time event again, like, as I did... And, uh, you'll just have to press the punch and kick button at the same time, and it'll automatically bring you to this next phase where you're back and beating up the head again. Otherwise, you have to keep waiting, you know, like, jumping from platform to platform, waiting for the tendrils to destroy a whole bunch of, uh, platforms. Um, waiting it is a waste of time during those parts, so you're better off just jumping off. At this point, uh, Eustacea doesn't really have any new attacks. I don't think it's still the third part. It might be. Once you've beaten the head enough, it will pull out a big rock, and you'll have to press the uh, punch and kick button together, the quick time event, in order to beat it up back at him. And once you do that, then uh, the head will be damaged enough so that you can actually uh, repeat the same process over again. Uh, generally, when you're running along the shaft, you want to be... You will not fall off, like, you have perfect gravity all over it. You t want to, uh, be on the opposite side of where the tentacles are at any one point, because they can sweep across it and knock you off. Well, okay, no, not knock you off. They'll just damage you. You don't want that. Once you get to this point, it's exactly the same as the first part, just 
beat up on the, uh, this little heart of a tentacle that comes up and, and eventually Bayonetta will slice it. It's kind of weird because during this fight, you saw how, uh, while I was beating up while standing on the nose, two of the, the spiked tendrils, they just slammed at me together. That's actually not too common. They will swipe at you one at a time sometimes, but I didn't get that to happen during this boss fight. And again, you know, like, waiting for it to destroy all the platforms and finish that whole entire part was a waste of time, so I just jumped off again. Now, during this last part, Eustacea will actually have some new things. See what he does here? That's what he does whenever he tries to destroy the platform. I, um... Like, he will start beating on it, you know, at the same time with the spike tendrils. I couldn't jump off of it enough times, so I had to, uh... Eventually had to do the quick time event again. But as you'll see at the end, I get a pure platinum from this, so the actual combo ranking is very generous for this fight. And yeah, I show this hit here because, yeah... This is one of his new, uh, newer attacks. He will just shove one of the tentacles at you and just clamp onto you and throw you down. But yeah, now we're, I mean, we're still in the third phase of the fight here. It's there, I was actually able to dodge at that time. As I show here, if you're trying to beat up along the shaft when he does this attack and you're in Witch Time, you're not going to do any damage to him. Because you have to attack near the head. And again, yeah, don't use Shiraba if you want a high combo. It's just too powerful a, a weapon for this boss. Use the Scarborough Fair or the Lightning Durgas. And yeah, if you stay at, uh, at the very top of the platform, that Poison Mist Spray will completely miss you. And the head will also start uh, flashing around. You can tell what it does, I guess it's... It'll start, like, moving in ways you hadn't seen before. Now, at this part here, once you've beat up the head enough... Like, again, it'll throw the rock at you, and you'll have to smack it back, but... Right afterwards, you're going to have to fight a second one. This will always happen, so be prepared for a second rock to come at you that you'll have to punch back at him. And with that, the third and final head can be traversed and, like, a, yeah, cut off. Now, on the, th now on the third, uh, like, a head tentacle... You'll have these uh, different uh, sp um, ring of spikes coming at you. They're smaller, they look more like actual saw blades, those there, as opposed to the ones that are just like three fancy looking swords. So yeah, you gotta be careful so that you don't take any damage against them. And just like the first two, beat up this one the same exact before. is no different in terms of how much health it has, no different in terms of what attacks it does. And really, that's... Actually, pretty simple. Eustace is a very simple and pretty easy boss once you uh, get to know him. I think a lot of this stuff is pretty easy to avoid. The checkpoints are generous. Um, this boss is probably one of the probably the easiest of the four cardinals of virtue in the game. Now, at the end here, he has a suicide move attack. You have to get that um, quick time event to summon uh, uh, her, you know, like a demonic summon, or else it will kill you. If, like, uh, that ramming attack, if you miss the quick time event, you will die, and you will be sent back to the main checkpoint if you check continue. So, if, unless you want a death rune in your ranking at the end of the chapter, that's something you will definitely have to, you know. <laughs> well, obviously you're going to do it anyways, if you because you have to do it to beat him, but... I mean, my point is, if you miss it, you will die. Still not enough, you see. You can go another round, can't you? Your soul of gold causes for us. Lonsi, Lonsi, Laia, Pila. The Lumen Sage. Ulsa, Kalasa, Uauna Kala, Ulprit Arbors, Ayosa, Bo.
suppose one of them is an adult, so they should be okay. <sighs> so yeah, apparently the, the Cardinals mentioned something about a Lumen Sage that is still apparently still alive. So yeah, I was actually a bit surprised that I got a pure platinum on this. But as you can see, it's not too terribly difficult to actually get a pure platinum on that. Like I said, in the first chap, like the first part of it where you fight in the forest, just make sure you don't really take any damage against them. Like, uh, most of your combo and time things are gonna matter once you fight Eustacea. But the upcoming chapter is one of my least favorite in the game, so it's very difficult to get a ranking on. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next episode.